Today we're taking a look at these NFL matches, which are happening on Sunday, November 13, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified, as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the High Stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Green Bay Packers vs Dallas Cowboys. I will be hammering the Dallas Cowboys, minus 4.5, on the road against the Packers, as I don't see Green Bay scoring enough points to keep this game within the spread. The Green Bay Packers have continued to struggle on the offensive side of the field, as they are only scoring the 27th most points per game. They're struggling inside the red zone, and their turnovers have continued to hurt them. I don't see the Packers getting hot against this Cowboys defense, as they are surrendering the third least amount of points per game and the fourth least amount of passing yards. They will lock up the Packers receivers and continue to get stop after stop. The Cowboys will also put pressure on Rodgers, as I see him being uncomfortable throughout this game. This will lead to mistakes and the Cowboys pulling away. Dallas also has a good enough rushing attack to score enough points on the Packers. Dallas is running for the 12th most yards per game, as Pollard and Elliott should feast in this game. Elliott is supposed to be healthy and back, as this two-headed monster will continue to move the ball for the Cowboys. Green Bay is allowing the 15th most points per game and the 26th most rushing yards. Their front seven continues to struggle, as the Cowboys will run away with this game on the road. Pick the Dallas Cowboys and lay the points, minus 4.5. Green Bay has struggled on offense all year, and the Packers will face one of the toughest defenses in the NFL right now in Dallas. While the Packers running game with Jones and Dillon has been solid, Dallas will be able to focus on the run, because of how weak the Packers passing game has been, and Dallas has also added Jonathan Hankins to help defend the run. The Cowboys offense is also not a unit that stretches the field a lot. Dallas has focused on running the ball with Pollard and Elliott, the Cowboys receiving corporation is limited, they don't throw deep a lot. Dallas should be able to take the lead early and control this game. Dallas and McCarthy have been very conservative offensively when they have been ahead all year. This should be a lower scoring game. Take the under, 44.5 points. Los Angeles Rams vs Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals have had a rough go of things this season, and with the lineup changes and players making their returns of late, they're hoping they can turn things around in this one. The Cardinals have lost two in a row and four of their last five, but they have actually been better on the road than at home. It remains to be seen if that success carries over into Sunday's game, but if they can grab a win in this one, it could serve to right the ship and improve the momentum that has been missing. After winning the Super Bowl last season, the Rams have certainly found it difficult to replicate that success this go-around. With two losses in a row themselves, and the Chiefs and Seahawks coming up next, the Rams know that they need to regain their confidence sooner rather than later. The Rams were able to take down the Cardinals back in September, but as that game gets further and further away, so does the confidence that came with it. With a losing record at home themselves, Los Angeles will be looking for the fans to help drive them to a season sweep over their rival. The Rams know that this is a game they have to win, and the combination of being at home and having confidence from coming out on top in September's matchup should be enough. The Cardinals are riddled with injuries on both sides of the ball, and with their struggles evident anyway, those injuries are only likely to further cause havoc on the road in this one. For the Rams, their talents remain at wide receiver to try to break this game open, though the defense will be what carries them to the win in this one. Additionally, according to Covers.com, the Cardinals are 0-6 in their last six games against NFC West foes, while the Rams are 12-3-1 at TS in the last 16 meetings overall between the two teams. Take the Rams, minus 1.5. Last week, the Cardinals played against the Seahawks, 6-3, and lost 31-21. Cards QB Kyler Murray was the lead rusher for 60 yards and also threw for 175 yards, completing 25 35 passes with no interceptions. 
Cardinals total rushing went for 122 yards, for a combined offensive yardage count of 262 yards. Murray may not go in this one due to a hamstring injury, which means veteran Colt McCoy could get the nod. The Rams lost a sloppy, underwhelming, yet exciting in a win at the buzzer way game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last week, with a final score of 16-13. Only two touchdowns were scored in this game one for each side. Brady's was more critical, coming in a one-yard pass to Kate Otten with nine seconds remaining to win the game. This was the final culmination of a winning Brady-esque drive of 60 yards in six plays and broke the Bucks' three-game losing streak. This game saw four sacks and eight QB hits against Rams QB Matthew Stafford, who entered concussion protocol on Tuesday and is questionable for this game. Edit. Stafford is expected to miss this game, Stafford had one touchdown in the first half and ended with 165 yards, completing 13 27 passes and no interceptions. Favored target T. Cooper Cup led receiving with 127 yards, while Rams RB Daryl Henderson ran for 56 yards. This game may have gone over with Matthew Stafford healthy, but trends didn't point that way even with his head on straight. Law will not be able to adjust to the ground with their poor rush offense, ranked 31st in the league. Trends point to under. Under is 4-0 in Rams' last four games after accumulating less than 90 yards rushing in their previous game, the Rams are under in 8-1 of their last nine games after allowing more than 250 yards passing in their previous game. With Stafford under the weather, it's time for all of us to also go under in this game. San Francisco 49ers vs Los Angeles Chargers. Los Angeles lost two of its first three games this season, with one of those setbacks being a troubling blowout loss to Jacksonville in Week 3. The Chargers have responded by winning four of their five games since then, including last week's 2017 win at Atlanta. They also picked up wins against Houston, Cleveland and Denver, with their lone loss during that stretch coming to Seattle in Week 7. Los Angeles has struggled defensively throughout the campaign, allowing the third most points per game in the NFL and a league-worst six runs of 40-plus yards. The Chargers are facing a dynamic rushing attack on Sunday night, so they will need a stronger defensive effort. This spread has skyrocketed since it opened at minus 3.5, but it has done so for good reason. The Chargers are in a tough spot on Sunday night they are missing multiple key players and are going on the road for the second week in a row. San Francisco's offense turned into one of the best in the NFL after acquiring McCaffrey, and they are facing a Los Angeles defense that is among the worst in the league. It is going to be difficult for the Chargers to get many stops, and Herbert is going to have trouble getting into a rhythm after going four straight games without throwing for 300 yards. Take the San Francisco minus 7 points. The 49ers just need to contain Herbert because the Chargers' run game is not explosive and doesn't get used as much. If the 49ers contain Herbert's passing game then they will come away with a win. On defense this season, San Francisco has allowed 307.9 total yards, surrendering 221.3 passing yards and just 86.6 rushing yards. They are allowing 18.4 points per game while earning 22 points themselves. On offense, they are earning 367.6 yards with 248.1 passing yards and 119.5 rushing yards. San Francisco recently added Christian McCaffrey to its roster, and he has added a lot of depth and explosiveness to the offense. McCaffrey has recorded 525 yards and three touchdowns this season, averaging 4.7 yards per carry. In his two games with the 49ers, he has earned 132 rushing yards and one touchdown, averaging 5.1 yards per carry. In the air, he has recorded 79 yards for one touchdown in two games. I see this game becoming a defensive battle, especially considering the Chargers don't have a good run game that is averaging less than 90 yards per game. The 49ers have a good pass defense, so either way the Chargers will be battling to get downfield, especially with Bosa and Hufanga staring Herbert in the face. The San Francisco defensive line will quickly tear down the Chargers offensive line. Garoppolo will have some defensive threats to be cautious of including Mack and Callahan, so they may opt to run the ball. Luckily for them, Samuel and McCaffrey have been awesome dynamic tools in the passing game and run game. Take the under 45.5 points because this game will come down to which defense can make the most stops.